Batgirl number eight, written by Gail Simone, art by Arjun Siaf, Aletha Martinez, and Vicente Cifuentes. Whole team of artists on this one. And already we're at the end of yet another arc. I feel like Batgirl is just really all up on these two to three issue arcs. But um, yeah, last issue left off with Batgirl chasing down some of Grotesque's thugs through the sewers. And then when she came across one of them, turns out that he was one of the Joker's goons the night she was shot. And this issue is just rattling off of that. And we just get the whole recap. His name is Danny the Weasel Weaver. And he was definitely there that night. And she's kind of freaking out a little bit. And as she's freaking out, the other thug that uh, she was chasing down gets up and is about to knock out Batgirl. She, of course, realizes it, knocks him out, and saves him from getting a concussion from hitting his head on a block or, like, maybe cracking it open. And then Danny stands up and he's like, um... Do I know you? And Batgirl tells her, tells him, just like, go, get out of here before I change my mind. So he runs off and she's like, okay, I have a lot to process right now and I need someone to talk to. So she heads home to talk to her uh, roommate, but when she gets back, she finds out that her roommate is working late that night and her dad is also unavailable at the time because, you know, commissioner and whatnot. So she realizes there's only one person left that she can really talk to and she calls up her mom. And she wants to meet up, so she wants to go over to her mom's place. Then we cut over to Grotesque's penthouse, and Danny has made his way back to Grotesque, and he's like, hey, I don't know why, but she let me go three. And Grotesque's like, interesting, interesting, but why would she let you go and only you? And he's like, I don't know, maybe she recognized me or something. I just figured I should tell you. And he's like, oh, yes, of course, but maybe we can exploit whatever she has going on in, with you to our own advantage. Then we get over to Barbara meeting with her mom, and it's a lot of arguing, like, right off the bat, and basically she's just like, why did you leave? Why did you leave Dad and me? Why, why did you just leave us all alone? And the story she tells is that Barbara's little brother, James Jr., one day he came up and said, hey, Mom, I have something to show you. It's a present out in the yard. And it turns out that James killed their family cat and then told her, if you don't, like, leave, if you don't get out of here, then I'm going to kill Barbara. So she just left. <laughs> like, she believed the 12-year-old who had killed the family cat and just left. Now, don't get me wrong, he's a psychopath, however... She's, Barbara pulls up like, oh, okay, and you couldn't have told us at all, ever? And she's like, no, no, don't get me wrong. I had my own issues, but I went to therapy, and I got through them, and now I feel I can finally come back. Especially because James was also recently taken care of or something like that. I don't know. So Barbara runs out because she just can't deal with this again. It's like everything is just something she can't deal with. So her mom says, like, I love you. Just remember that. And Barbara leaves and she's like, all right, I'm getting in my crime fighting gear because I should never have let Danny go. So she gets into Batgirl's gear, finds Danny's last address. Apparently he was on parole and she busts in and says like, all right, I'm taking her to jail. Don't make this hard. And as she busts in, she sees Grotesque is already there wielding his electricity powers, shocks Batgirl and just be like, oh, I knew you'd come back for him. You some I don't know why it is that you like him, but you will be the finest addition to my collection, blah, blah, blah. And he just goes through his whole rigmarole of like, oh, well, I desire the greatest things and whatever. And Batgirl immediately just starts, like, knocking him out. Apparently, he's able to use his powers a bit more effectively because there's a thunderstorm going on. But as he's about to shock Batgirl, Danny apparently aims for Grotesque and tries shooting him. He misses and then gets a lightning bolt to the chest. But that gives Batgirl the opportunity to just beat the ever-loving piss out of Grotesque. And, yeah, it's it's literally just a full page of just, all right, this guy is being brutally attacked. So once he's face down in the mud, Batgirl goes over to Danny and turns out that he is, like, fatally wounded. Like, he is bleeding out in his chest. There's no way he's going to be able to make this. And Batgirl's like, hey, look, I can get you help. I can do that. And he's like, yeah, but then I'll have to go to jail, and I'd rather just die than go back to jail again. And then he just explains that night with the Joker because I guess maybe he understands what's going on. And he's basically just saying, like, yeah, we shot that girl, and I didn't feel bad about it at all. But, like, 
then I just left and went home. And she's like, no, you didn't. I know what you did. You left and then you felt bad about what happened and you called the police. So that way, like, because otherwise I would have been left alone and I would have died there. But you called someone and I got help and that saved my life. And he, why did you do that? And he's like, I don't know. I just felt bad for her, I guess. Something right in a bad life. And then she dies as Batgirl's like cradling him in the rain. Didn't expect this beginning of the issue, got to tell you that much. And then we get a little two-page epilogue here, uh, 10 blocks away. Some girl's leaving a bar, and as she does so, she's approached by a man who's just like, oh, well, hey, I'm wondering if you had a light. And they start flirting a little bit, but as they do, she's like, oh, well, you know, you're, you're cute in a weird kind of way, so yeah, I guess we can go out for a drink. And she asks for his name, and lo and behold, it's James. It's James Gordon Jr. Psychopath is back. Grotesque was dumb. Like, he was a dumb excuse for a villain in general. And I get why we didn't stick with that. But if I feel like the story that Gail wanted to tell here was the Joker's goon coming back. And I actually like that one. I actually like that side of the story. It is a interesting plot to tell of like, okay... This guy who had a hand in it, but then also did something good, like, it's just this morally gray area of, like, he's not a good guy, but he did a good thing. And I like how they they deal with that, of him, like, you know, he dies heroically for whatever reason. That's the one thing I didn't like, is that they didn't really justify why he had this turn of heart all of a sudden. The only thing that I could possibly suggest is that Batgirl let him go, but, like... Was that really enough? I don't know. It doesn't seem like it should be to me. But no, it's a solid issue overall. Um, art is good. I like the tease of James at the end. I, I'm i interested by the mom's backstory with James, especially now that we're introducing him again. I think it's an interesting way to move forward. And it actually gives the mom something to do besides, please, honey, let me be in your life some more. So yeah, no, I'm... I'm interested in everything this book is doing right now. I just think that the framing device of grotesque as a villain was just dumb. That's the only flaw it really had. So overall, I'm going to give this one a 7.5. I do think it is pretty good. Uh, I'm just... I'm, I'm always on my toes with this book because the villains themselves have been consistently pretty dumb, but the story going on in the background has been pretty good. So we'll see if they can keep that up.